Greetings everyone, it's IT2 again. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Conjuring movie series and uh, I'm just in a Halloween mood early this year. I don't know if everybody else is. I know a lot of people are. They've been talking about it on Facebook and even like Starbucks had the pumpkin spice lattes out early like end of August this year. I'm sure like Walmart and some other stores probably got their Halloween decorations coming out already and like uh, the candy stuff and uh I think it's caused coronavirus, maybe, because everybody was locked down last year and you didn't get to do Halloween stuff, so everybody's wanting to do it early this year, maybe. I'm also kind of getting in a Christmassy mood. Like, I remember last year, that's not Christmas music. But anyway, uh, I've been doing, like, a movie marathon kind of a thing. Like, every day I've been trying to watch, like, a horror movie. Last year I really got into the Hellraiser movies and watched a bunch of those. This year I started out watching all the Saw movies. I think I got on Saw 5 and I started falling asleep halfway through it, so I need to rewatch that. I hate when I fall asleep watching a movie and I have to like catch up to where I was conscious and it's like annoying. I have to rewatch some of the same stuff, so I kind of got off of the Saw movies. But that was pretty cool though, like when they stick their hand up and the, the blades are on like hinges and you can't get your hands back out without cutting your hands off. Cool traps and shit like that. Plus I play Dead by Daylight, so it kind of gives me some insight into the characters in Dead by Daylight. All different horror genres and franchises. I mean, there's like the horror genre if you go on netflix and start looking at horror movies there's like tons and tons of horror movies like i've never heard of before because they don't really get advertised in the mainstream as much as normal movies but um uh you got your main movie villains like jason freddy and michael myers and all those but then you also had like the amityville horror movies that was a big and the uh nightmare or um night of living dead ones the zombie ones all those movies were kind of like their own thing. They didn't have like a main villain to them because they're more about like exorcism. And The Exorcist, that was another one. Didn't really have a franchise on that one, though, did it? Maybe it did. It's hard to look up any horror movie that doesn't have like eight more movies after it. But uh, I got into The Conjuring a long time ago. I watched Conjuring and then I watched Annabelle. So I hadn't watched those this week because uh, I think I knew there was a Conjuring too, but I didn't know there was like so many of them and they were all related. So, I don't really remember too much about the first two movies. I know there was, like, some demonic possession and stuff. And, like, in Annabelle, I think, they had to perform an exorcism. And the priest didn't get there on time. And Ed Warren had to do the exorcism. And, like, Ed and Lorraine Warren is basically what the whole movies are based on. If I can just switch this. That's the characters, the actors that play them. They do a really good job. But, uh, I think the actual Ed and Lorraine Warren in real life were probably like the movies make them out to be like heroes and like almost like superheroes like uh, Lorraine Harris is like a, a clairvoyant she can see extra things not like into the future but she can see like how things like you touch an item and see where it came from or where it's been that kind of a thing but she also can see like spirits and demons and that kind of stuff and then Ed is more like a uh he just does a lot of research and knows a bunch of shit and like he I guess does exorcisms kind of when he has to but it's like pretty cool how they have like a if they're there you kind of feel like everything's gonna be alright even though crazy shit's going on and ghosts are flying around throwing shit around the room and kids are being possessed and stuff but the real ones uh, this is Annabelle the real Annabelle doll that supposedly there really is like this artifact museum that they have or had in their house. That's another thing, by the way. They they make it out to be like they have this priest come by their artifact room and bless the room and bless Annabelle every week. And they have her in these like glass container that was like saved from a church that had been so it's like holy glass. Right? And she died in twenty nineteen. So I don't know if they still have that priest doing all this. I don't know if Ed Harris or Ed, Ed Warren is still around. Um, so I don't know if they're still taking... Like, does somebody inherit the Annabelle doll? Is it get, is it loose now or something? Because 2020 was horrible. So that would make a lot of sense. Like, Lorraine Warren dies in 2019 and then 2020 happens because this freaking Annabelle doll got loose or something. Maybe it's like demonic spirits run amok. Maybe that's why 2020 was so bad. Um, here's what they look like. They didn't really look like the actors at all. 
So I'm thinking like in real life they're probably like charlatans and maybe it was all fake. I mean a lot of this stuff was kind of verified and there's actual real court case which we'll get into later but uh, oh, what's this picture? Oh that's where she's doing some like some clairvoyant shit I guess. Anyway uh, the movies here's the basic uh, lineup so Conjuring and Annabelle I watched those years ago so I'm not really going to talk about those anymore. I remember they were really fucking good though so I don't know if they were 10 out of 10 but they were really good for like horror movies really and really good quality but these are like really high quality directing and acting and everything seemed pretty good uh, and then Annabelle introduces you to like the possessed doll and how demons work and they touch objects and they can inhabit objects and then if you touch the object then it like it's kind of like a, uh, a beacon for other spirits, they say, in later movies. So Annabelle was, like, super dangerous, and they had to, like, lock her up in their artifact room and keep her, like, under this holy glass that's blessed every week, right? So then The Conjuring 2, I watched that one early last week, I think. And it was about this girl who got possessed, and uh, the demon was kind of like this old man that kept, he used to live in that house. And he was like in this rocking chair, I think, right? And it was pretty scary. There was a lot of like jump scares and scary moments that kind of built up the tension to it, right? Really good movie. So that got me into, I'm going to watch the next one. I realized there's this whole order. Like, uh, if you watch them in chronological order, it's like this. The, the order in which the events in the movies happen. But I was watching them in the release order because a lot of them have like flashbacks to the previous movies. That they did intentionally, so I think you'd want to watch it in the, uh... Where's this guy that left here? I've never seen that. Oh, that's the, uh... The man from the, uh... There was, like, this little movie projector thing in The Conjuring 2? Or was it Annabelle... Creation? And It was Conjuring 2. Yeah, there was, like, this tent this kid had, and he kept seeing something was, like, pulling things into this tent, and there was, like, this... Stick man, almost like a Slender Man kind of a guy. He was like a British character, and he came out. He was like one of the demons, I think. So that was pretty cool. Uh, so then after the Conjuring Two was Annabelle Creation, and Annabelle Creation, they just went fucking nuts with it. <laughs> like it was about these girls who they were. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, they didn't have no parents. Why can I not remember what that's called when you don't have parents? Orphans. They were orphans that were sent to an orphanage, but it's out in the middle of fucking nowhere. It's like a farmhouse in the middle of a field. There's nothing for miles, I don't think. So how is anybody going to adopt these kids? And they're just at some house. It's not like they had the internet back then, either. So some of them were kind of older, but the one girl that really got possessed was like, she had something wrong with her leg. She had, like, this... S, this uh, one of those chairs, you know, that goes up the railing on the stairs to, like, take her up and down. They made her this thing. And I think the, the man and woman that was, like, taking them in, their daughter had died. Or something to this demon, or I forgot how it worked out. See, I can't remember all the stuff, but it, it was based on their daughter. I think. So anyway, they didn't like build up the tension and then stuff would happen. There was like ghosts walking around in the background constantly and stuff was happening and like people got possessed and like it was just a constant war with these demons and ghosts and shit. It was crazy. And <laughs> at one point that little girl with the messed up leg is in her little chair on the top of the stairs and demons just launched her in a fucking space. She just like shot up into the sky. I'm like, holy oh, crap, it's her in the moon. <laughs> What's going on here? And she just like falls. Up to the middle of the floor, and like she's still like possessed by the demon. I think it was crazy. It was awesome though. Uh, so that one was Annabelle creation. The guy that made Annabelle was the one taking in the orphans. Is that right? Yeah, and they they found Annabelle. And she kept like disappearing and reappearing in different places. She was under the stairs. Like this other kid saw her. It's like it's not like just one kid is seeing this and nobody believes her. It's like everybody's seeing this shit. It's cool. Um, so at the end of that one, what, that's not when they took Annabelle back, though. That's when they first got Annabelle. Because in the original Annabelle, it was like somebody gave their daughter the doll. So I can't remember, like, how Annabelle got loose again. 
I can't remember these movies. I'm telling you, they're good, though. You need to watch these movies. So then uh, was The Nun. Like, at the end of that movie, the, uh, Ed Warren is drawing a picture of this nun he thought was, like, related to this demonic possession somehow. Because he got a glimpse of it or something, right? So then the next movie leads you to this monastery whack in the past. So you go back. That's, like, the original earliest movie. That's, like, 1952, it says, right? This was in, like, Romania. And, like, this uh, nun commits suicide at this really old abandoned abbey. And this other nun and a priest get sent there to investigate it. And they find out, like, this abbey has been, like, keeping these demons at bay constantly. And, like, I guess they started running out of nuns, maybe. And they kept doing this thing called persistent adoration, where they have, like, one nun... Is like constantly praying to God to like keep the demons from taking over or something like that, right? And uh, there's this whole passageway that like they have to keep it locked. And they had, I don't know why they unlocked it. They had to try to get an artifact out of it, right? Oh, that's the one with the fucking Jesus blood, man. All right, spoiler alert. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't tell you about this. But <laughs> they had to seal this portal that the demons came out of, right? And they used the drop of Jesus' blood that they had, like an ancient artifact, a long time ago. And it was starting to, like, come back and open this portal again, and the demons were starting to come out. And, like, this nun, she's, like, not even taking her vows yet. She's, like, a new nun. Uh, she gets to fighting the demon and they go underwater she's got this glass egg that's got Jesus' blood in it and she like takes it in her mouth and she comes up and she spits the whole thing on the demon and like Rah! and kills it seals the portal it's awesome so the nun is really good but the next movie Curse of La Llorona that wasn't as good it was like vaguely connected to all the stuff see the Warrens weren't even really in the nun at all Till maybe like the end or something, or like the beginning or the end. But uh, La Llorona was about this Mexican woman that like her husband cheated on her and she drowned her two kids to get revenge on him, and then she regretted it later. She kind of cursed herself or something like that. So she kept like there was this thing where she would always try to take kids and drown them, like you get her kids back to like exchange the souls or something like that. It's kind of confusing and convoluted, but. Uh, there was a thing later on like in the artifact room that had like a wedding dress that would make you turn evil. I thought that had to do with La Llorona. But I think it was like the original Conjuring. I just can't remember it. But, uh, so definitely check out The Nun. La Llorona you could probably skip. <laughs> but <laughs> it was pretty good, I guess. Uh, what was after that one? Uh, Annabelle Comes Home. Okay, so this one not really about Ed and Lorraine Warren so much as it is about their house and their daughter. So their daughter gets like this babysitter and her friend and for some reason the babysitter's friend, oh her dad like she had had a wreck and killed her dad and she wanted to like speak to him again and she knows about the Warrens' artifact room. So she distracts them and she like sneaks in there and she's just like I'm just going to touch everything. <laughs> it clearly says, don't touch anything. She's like, I'm going to touch everything. She goes around and awakens all the spirits in the whole fucking artifact room. And lets Annabelle loose. Even though it's clearly sick. It's on the thing, like, positively do not open danger and all this shit. She's like, nah, I'm going to open it. <laughs> I'm just going to touch it. <laughs> she starts touching shit. <laughs> and obviously, shit went down. <laughs> and, like... The boyfriend that likes the uh, the babysitter shows up and starts serenading her and he starts like fighting this werewolf outside because there was like a demon dog was one of the things that it's kind of like Ghostbusters almost. It's kind of like a little bit zanier because there's like all this history of all the Ed and Lorraine Warren stuff that they've done over the years and kind of goes through them all and like talks about them like a little bit sort of like you, they show up. But uh, the daughter is kind of like a badass. She's like a mini version of her mom with the clairvoyant stuff. And she kind of knows stuff. And she's learned things from being around them. Pretty cool. But uh, eventually, they get it under control. They get Annabelle back in her cage. And, uh, you know, that's pretty good. It's a pretty nice movie. I like that movie. Um, was that Annabelle Comes Home? Yeah. So that was in 1972. So then the last movie 
the Conjuring the Devil Made Me Do It. That's the one that's based on the actual court case where this little kid was possessed. And then, like, he was just kicking everybody's ass. They tried to do an exorcism on him, and he he wouldn't have it. (laughs) The demon was too powerful, and he almost killed the priest. And uh, the brother of his sister... No, the guy that was trying to date his sister was there. He was going to ask her to marry him, pretty much. They were, like, uh, almost engaged. He invites the demon into him to save the little kid. So then he ends up possessed he kills a cop no he kills somebody oh this fucking asshole guy <laughs> he probably deserved to die uh they had like a uh an animal shelter and this drunk guy that was like the keeper of the animal shelter he killed him but he was being a real dick he was drunk off his ass off beers and i'm like i just i don't see how drinking beers can make you that stupid after i've tried beers it was weird Anyway, uh, yeah. So that that was the first one they had a court case where he was like, pled not guilty by reason of demonic possession. And it was kind of like a, the Ed and Lorraine Warren had to go and find out, they had to kind of prove that the demons existed, even though they already kind of proved it to the church, but they had to prove it like in law form. So they had to like go meet this other priest and like have him kind of like translate some stuff for him it turns out his daughter was the one she was like a witch that had put this totem under the house that had called the demon it was like the demon wasn't constantly possessed and it was like summoned whenever she had this like big altar that she had that had to be destroyed in order to break the curse it was like a demonic curse sort of a thing and then they had to like the demon eventually after they had uh broken the altar it freed that guy that was going to like take his soul that she exchanged to the demon and now had to take the witch's soul. So one of those kind of things, you know. You make a deal with the devil, it's going to bite you in the ass if you don't follow through on your, your bargains, pretty much. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think that guy eventually got manslaughter instead of murder, so he only had to do five years. And then it says he's still married to that woman to this day. So he's probably still out there. You could like interview him about this stuff. Somebody could. Uh, I need to like check and see where the Sandbell doll's at now. I'm really kind of curious about it. Uh, yeah, I think that's all of the movies. I think I got them all. So that they're all pretty good, except for La Llorona. Not really that great. The other ones are like at least nine or ten out of ten. So check them out. As far as horror movies go, it's about. As top quality as it gets. Uh, so, I don't know if I'm going to review the Saw movies. I just like, it's like fun to learn about the different kinds of traps they make. And I'll finish up the Hellraisers this year maybe. And then some other movies like uh, Strangers Pray at Night. I'm going to watch pretty soon. Some other things. There's some TV series too that are like horror shows. Like, uh... What is that one I've been watching? Slasher? Yeah, there's some slasher shows. I don't know, that seemed pretty good. 